Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Carlos, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support for amazing patrons like Carlos, so again, Carlos, thank you so much. And for the personalized deck tech, Carlos actually chose an Omega level commander. An Omega level commander is a commander that is incredibly powerful and a massive threat. And actually, for this episode, Carlos is going to handle the intro for me. Hey Mitch, Carlos here from Aurora, Colorado. And for my tech deck, I would like to see you build around Marin of Clan Nelta, focusing on this disgustingness known as Infect. Marin is a 3 4 human shaman that costs 2 black and a green. She has whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter, and at the beginning of your end step, choose a creature card in your graveyard. If that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have, return to the battlefield, otherwise put in your hand. So, Marin is an incredibly powerful commander, one that can get a ton of value for you throughout the game. Building up those experience counters is incredibly easy, and in fact, we've got plenty of creatures that actually want to die to get us experience counters, and then of course, once we've built those experience counters, instead of just getting a creature back to our hand, which is already a ton of value, now we can get them directly into play. And like Carlos said, this deck is going to focus on Infect, an incredibly powerful mechanic, especially in a format like Commander, where everyone has 40 life to start, but with Infect, you just need 10 poison counters to take someone out. So our army of Infect creatures can keep coming at our opponents again and again and again, because Marin can just keep getting them back out. Now, even though Marin is a $10 card or so herself, this is still a very budget-friendly deck because the rest of the deck has cards that are all less than $1. And as we go through the cards on this episode, I'm going to be breaking this episode down into different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. On top of that, if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that link in the description below. And now with all of that said, let's jump into it. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice to get a basic land in the play tapped. Another fantastic turn one play is Search for Tomorrow, which we can pay a green to spend it for two, and it says search for life for a basic land and put it into play untapped. And then we actually have a creature that can help us ramp as well as Dungeon Farmhand. Again, basically the exact same thing as Wayfarer's Bobble, pay one to green and sacrifice to get a basic in the play tapped, but again, with Marin, we get an experience counter again when this dies. So now let's move on to some turn two ramp spells with Rampant Growth, Secure Tribe Elder, and Edge of Autumn. Rampant Growth can get us a base gonna play tap. Secure Tribe Elder does the exact same thing when we sacrifice it. So again, experience counter and Edge of Autumn can get us a land as long as we've got four or fewer lands when we cast it, or we can cycle it away by sacrificing a land. Next up, we've got two more creatures that can help us out with Far Haven Elf and Spring Bloom Druid. Far Haven Elf gets us a base gonna play tapped, and Spring Bloom Druid's gonna make us sacrifice one land to get two basics into play tapped. And speaking of multiple basics, Cultivate's gonna get us one basic into our hand and the other onto the battlefield tapped. Finally though, one last creature that can really help us ramp is Rampant Rejuvenator, a 0-0 that comes into play with two plus one counters on it. And when it dies, we search for library for X basic land cards where X is its power, we put them on the battlefield, then we shuffle. But now that we've talked about ramping, let's get on to the real stars of the show. And that, of course, would be Infect Creatures, and we're going to start off with our lowest cost ones at 1 mana with Glistener Elf and Vector Asp. Glistener Elf is just a 1-1 one, one with Infect, but again, consider that it only takes 10 poison counters to take someone out, so basically, I mean, if you map it in a certain way, it's kind of like this is a 4-4 four, four for 1 mana. Again, essentially is what I say. I mean, it's not exactly that, but we are taking out basically a tenth of a player's life just by hitting them with this. And again, poison counters do not go away. So yeah, if we get this down early, we can really punish one of our opponents. Speaking of which, there's Vectras, which is a 1-1 that doesn't have Infect, but we can pay a black to give Infect until end of turn. Moving on at 2 mana, we've got Flenser Might, Plague Stinger, and Blight Mamba. Flenser Might is a 1-1 with Lifelink and Infect, Plague Stinger is a 1-1 with Flying and Infect, and Blight Mamba is a 1-1 one with Infect, and we can regenerate it for 1 in a green. Regardless, being low to the ground, each of these can really help us out. Speaking of which, next up we've got Iker Claw, Mirror, Necropede, and Finn the Fangbearer. 
Microclaw mirrors a 1 1 with Infect that has whatever becomes blocked gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. And again, keep in mind that when an opponent's creature is dealt combat damage by one of our Infect creatures, it's in the form of minus 1 minus 1 counters. Next up, there's Necropy, which is a 1 1 with Infect, and when it's been to a grave from the battlefield, we can put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature. And then there's Finn, which is a 1 3 that does not have Infect, but it does have Death Touch, and whenever a creature you control a Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets 2 poison counters. So essentially, if we can get this through again, that's going to be, what, one-fifth of a player's life total going away just for getting hit by a 1-3? Yeah, that is a lot of value out of this little creature. But of course, we are nowhere near done with our infect creatures just yet. Because moving on at 3 mana, we've got Contagious Nim, Sisbearer, and Rotwolf. Contagious Nim is a 2-2 with Infect, Sisbearer is a 2-3 with Infect, and Rotwolf is a 2-2 with Infect, and whenever a creature is dealt damage by Rotwolf and it dies this turn, we can draw a card. Regardless of the amount of Infect creatures that we have in this deck, our opponents are going to be overwhelmed. So, of course, we've got even more with cards like Viridian Corruptor, Ikor Rats, and Septic Rats. Corruptor is a 2-2 with Infect that has, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. Ikor Rats is a 2-1 with Infect, and when it enters the battlefield, each player gets a poison counter. So this can already get things started just by it coming into play. And then Septic Rats might just be a 2-2 with Infect, but when it attacks if the defending player is already poisoned, it's going to get an extra plus plus one until end of turn. And of course, it's going to be very difficult for our opponents not to get poisoned when we have this many Infect creatures. So speaking of which, next up we've got a 3-1 for 3 mana with Viridian Betrayers, which has Infect as long as an opponent is poisoned. And then at 4 mana, we've got Black Cleaf Goblin, a 2-1 with Haste and Infect, so it can swing very quickly and start dishing out that Infect damage. Whereas Blight Widow is a 2-4 with Reach, and Infect so it can be a fantastic blocker. But then there's Core Prowler, a 2-2 with Infect, and when it dies, we proliferate. Which of course means extra poison counters for each of our opponents. And then Corpse Core is a 2-2 with Infect as well, but when it enters the battlefield, we can bring back a creature card from our graveyard with Infect to our hand. Also at 4 mana, we've got Phyrexian Batmother, a 4-5 with Infect that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you get a poison counter. That is a small price to pay for a creature like this one that can dish out a ton of poison counters. Speaking of which, next up we've got Flesh Eater Imp, which is a 2-2 with Flying and Infect, and we can sacrifice creatures to give it plus plus 1 until end of turn. So this can be a fantastic way to take out opponents and also to get more experience counters with our commander. But we can also help get creatures through with Tangle Angler, a 1-5 with Infect, and by paying a green, we make target creature block it this turn if able. Finally, there's Carrying Call, which is an instant that's going to make us two 1-1s one with Infect. So yeah, at instant speed, we can flash this in out of nowhere. But of course, we're still not done with our Infect creatures just yet. Because next up at 5 mana, we've got Pestilent Soul Eater, Scourge Servant, and Reaper of Shieldred. Pestilent Soul Eater is a 3-3, and we can pay a black to give it Infect until end of turn. Scourge Servant is just a vanilla 3-3, but again with Infect, and then Reaper of Shieldred is a 2-5 with Infect, and it says whenever a source deals damage to Reaper of Shieldred, that source controller gets a poison counter. So we are definitely not going to hesitate to send this out in combat. And speaking of sending out into combat, there is one creature in this deck, in fact one card in this deck that stands above the rest, and that is the Golden Pig of this deck. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Putrefax. It's a 5-3 horror with trample and haste and in fact that costs three green green and it says at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice putrefax. So for just five mana, we get five hasty trampley in fact damage coming at our opponents. This on its own obviously can just two shot a player if we can keep getting it through and yeah, sacrificing at the end step is really not all that big of a deal, especially with this commander. Because again, that's just essentially an automatic experience counter and again, once we get to five experience counters, we can just keep getting this back into play. So yeah, this is a very deadly in fact creature that we can just keep getting out that can just keep demolishing our opponents and yeah, for all those reasons, it is most definitely the golden pig of this deck. But finally, we even have some infect creatures at 6 mana with Spinebiter, Toxic Nim, and Phyrexian Juggernaut. Spinebiter is a 3 4 infect, and we can assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So that's basically a guaranteed 3 poison counters on an attack. Next up, there's Toxic Nim, which is a 4 1 with infect, and we can actually pay a black to regenerate it. And finally, there's Phyrexian Juggernaut, a 5-5 with Infect that has to attack each combat if able, but um, yeah, we're completely fine with that. But now that we've talked about our lovely Infect creatures, what's next? <music> next. 
Next up, let's talk about some incredible creatures in this deck with Flashback Marauder, Merciless Executioner, and Demon's Disciple. Each of these are very similar. When they enter the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature, and Demon's Disciple actually says creature or planeswalker. So first up, for three mana, we are making every single player sacrifice a creature, including ourselves, which we obviously can just sacrifice them to their own trigger, and we get an experience counter for our commander, which is incredible. And also again, by taking out our opponent's creatures, it's gonna be easier to get our infect creatures through. So of course, we're also gonna be running Plague Crafter, which is a 3-2 that has mentors the battlefield. Each player sacrifices a creature planeswalker. Each player can't discards a card. So this essentially punishes our opponents no matter what. And then Caustic Counterpillar is yet another creature that can help us with experience counters. By paying one in green, we sacrifice it, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Speaking of which, there's Foundation Breaker, which has an evoke cost of one in green. So when we cast it for its evoke cost, we sacrifice it when it enters the battlefield, and its ETB is you may destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Moving on, we've got Outland Liberator. By paying one, we can sacrifice it, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. And when it flips over to Frenzy Trap Breaker, we can do the exact same thing. And when it attacks, we destroy target, artifact, or enchantment, defending player controls. So this can help us get rid of quite a few things and again, add to our experience counters. But of course, we're also running some spells that can help us out too with Golgari Charm, Casualties of War, in In Garrick's Wake. Golgari Charm says, choose one. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. It destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature you control. So this is a flexible card that can help us out in a lot of scenarios. Speaking of which, Casualties of War is a very flexible card that says, choose one or more, destroy target artifact, creature enchantment, land, and planeswalker. Or if we just need to get rid of, you know, everything essentially, In Garrick's Wake can do just that. Destroy all creatures you don't control and all planeswalkers you don't control. So of course, this is a fantastic way to wipe out our opponent's creatures and to get every single one of our infect creatures through. Speaking of which... We can actually get our infect creatures through as well with the help of cards like Taunting Elf, Shinnen of Life's Roar, and Akran Assassin. All these are essentially simple creatures that say all creatures able to block them do so. And actually, okay, with Shin of Life's Roar, we can actually channel it and then have all creatures block a certain creature. And then Okran Assassin actually has Death Touch, so that's nice too. But yeah, the important thing is, each of these force our opponent's creatures to block them. And by blocking them, well, they're not going to be blocking our infect creatures. So this can be a fantastic way to take a player out. Speaking of which, we're also going to be running Tree Shaker Chimera, an 8-5 Chimera that says all creatures able to block it do so. And when it dies, draw three cards. This can be a fantastic, again, in combination with our commander, repeatable way to demolish our opponents, you know, with their creatures, you know, with this 8-5, and also get our infect damage through on them, and on top of that, draw a ton of cards. So yeah, a card like this has a lot of potential with Marin. But of course, this isn't the only way that we have to draw cards. So moving on, we've got Sign of Blood, which is going to have us draw two and lose two, Read the Bones of Tessa, Scry two, draw two and lose two, In Siphon Mind, which makes every other player discard a card, and we draw a card for each card discarded this way. Then we've got a very simple draw spell, Harmonize, which is going to have us draw three cards for four mana. And then Shamanic Revelation is going to have us draw a card for each creature we control, and we gain four life for each creature we control of power four or greater. Again, with the number of creatures that we have in this deck, the number that we can get into play, and, you know, the amount that our commander can keep getting back for us, this can be a ton. Speaking of which, there's Promise of Power, which can have us draw five and lose five, and yeah, one life for one card is well worth it in Commander. And a somewhat similar card is Moonlight Bargain. It's an instant that says, look at the top five cards of your library for each card. Put that card in your grave unless you pay two life, then put the rest in your hand. So this can actually help us get some creatures into our graveyard, and yeah, help us get some cards off the top of our library into our hand for some life. But an incredibly impactful card in this deck is Return of the Wild Speaker, which is an instant that says choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. This can be a great way to draw some cards, or, you know, to surprise pump our creatures, and yeah, with those infect creatures, that is incredibly deadly. And speaking of infect, we even have a draw spell that can help us with poison counters. Caress of Rexia says, target player draws three cards, loses three life, and gets three poison counters. So if we need to target ourselves with this, we can, but if not, yeah, we can just take an opponent out with this in many circumstances by giving them poison counters. But now that we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck, let's talk about the lands. First up, there's Command Tower, which can tap for either of our colors, and Exotic Orchard, which can do so most of the time. Next up, we've got three lands that can be sacrificed to get us a base gonna play tapped, and Reaper Tears Overlook is actually gonna gain us one life when we do so. 
And then there's Ash Barrens, which does basic land cycling for one, and Mirror Landscape and Blighted Woodland, which can each help ramp us. Moving on, there's Rogue's Passage, which can make a creature unblockable. Temple of Malady, which enters the battlefield tapped, and is going to have a scry one, it can tap for either of our colors. And Golgari Rot Farm, which also enters the battlefield tapped, is going to make us bounce a land back to our hand, but can tap for both of our colors. And finally, to round out the deck, we've got Basics with Forests and Swamps. But now that we've talked about every single card in this deck, let's talk about the prize. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, even though Marin herself is about a $10 card, the rest of this deck is very budget friendly with the rest of the cards being less than $1 a piece, so the estimate cost for this deck is $40.98. And actually, that estimated cost does include the cost of basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you already have those basics, there's some extra savings there. Speaking of potential savings, you might be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing heavily played and damaged cards, which of course need a home too. That being said, keep in mind that that estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.